I'm Ryan with Advanced Fuel Dynamics, and this is our ultimate streetable track car build. All right, so we have our C6Z06 on the lift, and we're going to show you how to pin the ECU for the flex fuel sensor. So the first thing we're going to do is remove the front wheel. All right, next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove this uh, splash guard or inner fender uh, well, and there's a couple of the plastic retainers uh, here, and there's some underneath as well as a couple of bolts. Okay, I'm going to try and give you a view of the connector you need to get to. So now that we have that removed, you can look up and you can see the ECU right there. So this first connector you're looking at right here, see if I can get my finger in there, that is J2. You want the one behind it, J1. So it's the one further back that you can see. So we're going to lift that tab and that's going to release it from the ECU. Okay, we've got our connector removed from the ECU, unhooked, and now we're going to take off this uh, cap here. And then we can take off this here so we can see our pins a little easier. So what we're going to do is there's a release on both sides, a little clip. You can use a screwdriver or a pick and you just lift that up and then flip it over. The other side, same thing, trying to make this so you can see it. There it goes, it pops up. That comes off so you can see you know where your wires are gonna go there we go now you can see the pins so I've removed this piece and the back piece so we're gonna locate pin 40 and if you look on here there's actually in the very corners there will it will say a pin number let's see if I can if you look up here it says pin 53 so that's this row the last one so this would be pin 52 so you can count this way and find pin 40. So now we're going to take our connector and we're going to take our pin and we're going to push it in to the back on pin 40. It's hard to see if there's a yellow wire. There's a yellow wire sticking up right there on the second row and then there's a blank or two um, and ours is going to go between there. Now our wire is typically yellow as well. <laughs> so the yellow next to the yellow, it's probably not going to be the same way on all the ECUs, but you'll just slide it in like this and it'll click or you'll feel it kind of snap in and then we'll be done. All right, I got our wires zip tied back on here like, like you know they were, but with our extra wire in there now. We're gonna put our cap back on. There we go. Now it's ready to go back onto the ECU. So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna unplug our purge valve right here and just lift on the tab, pull it up and out of the way. As you can see, these are the same connectors. So what you're gonna do, figure out where you want your wire routing. I'm gonna run it across here uh, with the coils. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in here and I'll go ahead and plug the original connector right into it. But we'll run this along here. Take our ground out of the equation. We can ground it somewhere else. We'll run this along here. Okay, so we're gonna route the ground wire. It's gonna follow these connections down and I'm gonna try and get a camera shot of where it's going. There's your ground right there. So you're gonna run this wire down by this loom and across and we'll connect it right to that ground there. That's a really good ground. Okay, now that we have our power and our ground hooked up over here, we have our wire pinned into the ECU. We have our flex fuel connector run over to the side where the fuel line is. Uh, we're gonna install our our flex link. Now, if you have the direct system without the flex link, you don't have to do this step. You're just connecting your power and your ground and the lead over to the flex fuel sensor. What we're gonna do is we're gonna connect the number one to the side coming from the sensor, and the number two is gonna be coming from the side with the power lead. And then obviously we'll tuck this all away and make it look really neat, but just for, so you can kind of see how it goes, we get our wire going down to the ECU, our flex fuel sensor connector, our power over here, and our ground. All right, this is our fuel line on our Z06 here. Uh, so we're gonna remove the plastic cover. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove these clips here. So you can simply, you can just lift up on these and then they pull out, does that on both sides. And there's a couple of different configurations and ways this line can be run. Now you're definitely gonna wanna get some rags for this part because it is gonna leak fuel. What I do is I push this in, push it in towards the fitting, push the fitting towards the tool comes right out. There you go, and you got a little bit of fuel coming out. So I'm gonna push my fitting towards the line, and then the line towards the fitting. Boom, there it is. A little bit of fuel coming out. That's it, our fuel line is removed. Now we'll get our new lines, fittings, and sensor. So there are a couple of different configurations and ways this could be laid out. But what I'm gonna try on this is uh, I have this uh, double female. We got our flex fuel sensor and the line. So what I'm gonna do is snap that on there. I'm gonna configure our sensor. It doesn't matter which way it goes. 
So I'm gonna go this way so my plug can come back here. I think that'll look cleaner. Snap that on there, and this on there, and that should snap in. There we go. It's kind of hard to see on camera, but you have four fuel injectors. Here's your rail. So the fuel injectors come off the rail, and there are four connectors. So I like to squeeze the clip and push towards the rail, towards the injector, and then pull back, and that normally allows them to release really easily. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your short lead. There's one side's longer than the other, and you're gonna lay these out, shortest to longest, and you'll go ahead and you'll plug the female end, and that's plugged in. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our male end and plug it into the factory connector. There we go. All right, the next step here is to turn it on. Make sure you don't have any fuel leaks. So I've checked all of our fittings. And up there by the firewall, those two connections, there are no fuel leaks, so we're good to go.